Hello, and welcome back to our Let's Play Planescape Torment, where we have turned up the music. Because it is good. I really like the music in this game. So far, I really like the music. D&D games have a very good history with, with music, especially Baldur's Gate 3. Anyway, we finally got... A, another companion for our group, a Getzerai, a fighter mage. And I said we were going to talk to the plane walker, uh, Ken Kandrian. So let's All get right. down there and see if we can't help uh, Ingress. Yeah. See if we can help her, or if he knows any way we could help her. You see a soft looking man with gentle, far staring eyes. He dresses in a supple in supple leather clothing and carries various instruments of use and destruction about his body, such as ropes, spikes, tinder boxes, and even vials of air. He looks half gone, literally. There is an insubstantiality to his existence, as if his existence has been partially leached away. He focuses those eyes on you, and suddenly you find him gripping and determined. Greetings to you, O oh seeker. Greetings. He carefully sets down the mug he's holding and gives you all his attention. I have seen the far reaches of the multiverse and returned to tell the tale. I have walked among the bodies of dead gods and spun moonbeams in, in the astral ahead of, thousand, of a thousand shrieking Githyanki knights. I have passed the edges of existence and watched my existence shiver away before me. What is it I could do for you? That is quite the introduction. I had some questions for you. Perhaps I have answers for you. Speak, and I shall tell you. I met a woman named Ingress with very bad teeth. She said she had come through a portal from some world that was opened by a tune hummed near two crossed trees. Can you help her get home? He pauses briefly, thinking. I know the portal of which you speak, though I have not traveled it in these thirty years gone. I will take her home, Seeker. Go tell her to await my arrival. Then meet me back here, and I will tell you if I was successful or not. Thank you. Updated my journal. Let's let's go do that right now. I don't want to get too sidetracked and come back to it, so we'll come back and we'll uh, speak to the other people remaining. I spoke with uh, Kandrian about Ingress. He said he would guide her home. He told me to tell her to await him. Got it. Yep. And you know what? Now that we have this Git Zarai, I'm let's gone. go handle these these clowns in red. Oh, who? Who? Right there. I heard that battle music. Do you people want to attack? That Git Zarai is really hauling ass after him. Got him. Suggest it, people. I do not suggest it. All right, hive thug. This small, wiry thug is swathed in rags, dyed red and black. He glances as you approach. Greetings. The man does not speak. He only glares at you. It doesn't look like he is the leader of the small band. All right. Well, how about this ugly bald dude right here? This heavy set thug is swathed in rags, dyed with red and black. He looks like he is made almost purely of muscle. He glowers at you as you approach. Greetings. And how can I help you then, Governor? Oh, how can I help you then, Governor? This man's face breaks into a sneer. Looks to me he needs a healer. Yeah. Alright, I'm pouring my drink. You one of those 
ones who robbed the monk in the hive? Took his prayer bead necklace? Some sod with lines scrawled over, all over his face? Claimed he could have put us all in the dead book, but lets us bob him, bob him blind. The man gives a slow, toothless smile. Never seen... Never seen... Ah... Uh, never even heard of such a sod, I haven't. Let's lie here. That is interesting. The rest of his order is looking for you. The brothers of Eret Age. Eret Age. Seems... Seem to know you quite well. Eh? The man sneers, fades. What are you on about? What brothers? Saab was alone, he was. You're gonna lie. He's a member of a, re of a religious order, you fool. That necklace you stole is their most holy relic. If it isn't returned, the rest of his order will come looking for you. And they don't have any reservations about killing thieves. The man's eyes widen. Hey, now, we was just keeping the relic for him. He reaches into the fold of his robe and pulls, out, pulls forth the necklace, which he hands carefully to you. Here it is. No harm done, eh? I hope this is enough to call off the rest of his order. Perhaps a donation to their cause is in order as well. Might help smooth things over and ward off any curses that might come your way. Updated my journal. <laughs> Give me ten copper. Curses? The man makes a semicircle over his heart. Hey, well now, I wouldn't want any of that. He reaches into his purse at his belt, hands over several copper coins. Take it with me, blessing, governor. Tell him no harm was meant. But your donation is appreciated. I'm gone. All right, let's let's go back and give the monk his money. Then we'll go to Ingress. All right. There's Miriam. Wait, my pet limb doesn't come with me from place to place. Uh, examine your limb limb. Your limb limb appears both insect and animal of origin. Its legs are oversized, but his arms are small, nearly vestigial. A bright, speckled half shell runs down its back. It sports a pair of insect like wings, tiny. But okay. Um, pet your limb limb. And then. Pet your limb limb some more. Pick up. Pick your limb limb back up. He not here? You can't afford to get cut off. Experience. I'll take it. You see that? Fantastic hit. Who got that? Critical hit. Mort. Good man. I'm hurt. Oh. Duh. Back up. Here he is. I thought he was down south. We could have gone to Ingress first and made our way over here. Hello there, Cutter. Seen you before, no? Sure I have. Uh, no, wait. No, this isn't him. Where the hell did I see him? Was this him? Hmm. 
you see uh, Orphirion. He is standing grimly in the street, praying to heat, paying heed to no passersby. The web, of, the web of lines on his face are staggered. Okay, yeah, this one addresses you, uh, Porphyrion. You speak, as to speak, the angles of his face relax, strange curves, yeah. Uh, do you have the neck, neck rope of beads that was stolen? I Updated believe I do. Journal. This one sees what you hold. Those are beads once missing. He takes from you. He takes them from you, and you notice that his hands have the same trace of your lines upon them as his face. This one has a question. How did you get the beads from the three? I convinced them it was in their best interest to return the necklace. This one would know. One who fights with words carries a name of the order of Eret er, er, Agae. Porphyrion's face breaks into angles again. Those ones are called diplomats. It is a path without discipline and without honor. If you were a true warrior, you would learn to use every weapon at your disposal. This one bestows apologies. This, was, this one meant no offense. The angles on Porphyrion's face sharpen acutely, then slowly curve into ripples. This one bestows several welcome thanks for your service, yes? You're welcome. I think. I have a question for you though. If you cannot enter combat, how did you get your warrior how did you get your warrior training? This one clarifies. The eager Age may train with one when there is no anger between them. Oh, does this guy turn you back into a fighter? Okay, yeah. I think that makes sense. Because the one the one guy can turn you into a thief back here, it seemed. And then, of course, we had the, the wizard up there, too. And then this guy, I believe, would be the fighter. All right. Makes sense. More, more thugs want a piece. Alright, Ingress. My dear. I have good news. You see Ingress. Ingress. You see Ingress. She is huddled inside her cloak of dirty rags, her teeth chattering. She, she is glancing uh, fervently about her as if expecting to be attacked at any moment. Any moment. Greetings, Ingress. Hey, you. She squints. What is, it, what is it you want with me now? You want me to leave? Not leaving the city, so I'm not. I can't. I tried. It's not a city. It's a prison everywhere. Ingress, I found someone who can take you back to your home plane. Ingress falls silent. I want to go. I want to leave this place. His name is Kandrian. He should be along shortly to help. Trust him, alright? Ingress says nothing, merely nods quietly, her teeth chattering inside her mouth. I'll go back and meet with the Candrian at the Smoldering Corpse Bar, and make sure everything turned out alright. Be strong, Ingress. Updated my journal. Hey, uh, we're being watched, Chief. Just look natural. Uh, casual. I wonder if doing too many good deeds will get the attention of uh, the Lady of Pain. All right.
Andrea stands as you approach him. The tooth woman wanted you to have these. She says, or he says holding out his hand. She wanted to express her thanks, even out of the balance book as it were, and be done with the damn things. In the palm of his hand are Ingress's dancing teeth, and he smoothly deposits them into your hand. Enjoy them, Seeker. All right, I had some other questions. Perhaps I have answers. Looking for a journal I lost. There's no journals lately. That crumpled away. And that has crumpled away into nothingness. Okay. Don't even know about Feyrod or this place. Got it. Alright. Ebb Creek Knees. You see a slightly stooped old man with a full gray beard and a lion's mane of gray hair. He wears a couple of shoulder guards as armor, and he keeps a helmet nearby. He smokes a pipe and carries a pouch of tobacco around his waist. He looks pretty strong, but he's a little plump. Also appears to have some sort of breathing trouble. Well now, aren't you a sight, lad? Never had I seen so many scars blanketing a fella. Like a scar cloak you're wearing. Where you been? Hanging out in the grain thresher? He laughs. Oh, I'm just jesting with you, lad. No, no offense meant. I hope no offense taken. I'm Ed. He extends his hand. Greetings, Ed. His handshake is firm. Now, I hereby tender my apologies for the unfair jesting, lad. I hope no hard feelings. I can buy you a tankard or two of something too smooth and ruffled to smooth any ruffled feathers. Yeah, why not? That's the spirit, lad. Bide a moment. He rises to his, to his feet and heads to the bar. After a moment, he returns to his seat with a pair of tankards. Here you go, lad. Drink up. He takes a massive swallow from his tankard and puffs his pipe and says, What can old Ed do for you this fine sigil day? I had some questions about this place. Oh, well, I gathered that just to look at you. I mean, you don't look like you're from around these parts, lad. You look a little too out of sorts to be a seasoned native. Eb chuckles, then takes another drink. So what can I help you with, lad? You need to know where they lay the... You need to know where... Ah, uh, you need to know the lay of the land? Eb winks. Yes, tell me how this city and its environs work. Eb laughs loudly. You don't think small, do you? If you want to know what's outside the city, go talk to Candria Nilborn over there. He's a traveler of this place. As for the rest of it, well, I can tell you that the lady of... Tell you of the lady, the Dabas, keys and portals. The way we keep track of, the way we keep track of time and the way the city's laid out. What did you want to know? Tell me of the lady. Well, no, not many know much about her, lad. And I'm figuring even those that know more than a little don't know too much more. She's a mystery, she is. And even should you run across her, powers forbid, she's silent and deadly. She's not evil, far as I can tell, but she keeps the dark about herself and sigil pretty tight. No one, none's been able to penetrate it, and if they have, they've been mazed. Mazed? What do you mean? Aye. Sometimes bloods will be packed off to a place where they can't do no harm. The lady, see, she'll take a bit of sigil and make it a little dimensional pocket and make a little dimensional pocket out of it, a maze. She places those that have crossed her in there and lets them rot. Ed puffs his pipe. Now you can't escape getting mazed once the lady sets her gaze on you, lad. She'll get you eventually, no matter how hard you try and dodge her. You'll be walking down an alley, or about to step through a portal, and take a left turn down a street you've gone many fold times before, then suddenly you're someplace you don't recognize. Now mazes aren't escape proof, there's always a way out of each one. A portal the lady places there, a portal the lady places there, you just have to figure out where it is and how to use it. Alright, well I had some other questions about Sigil. Tell me about Sigil's time. 
the way we measure time in sigils, in sigils by the brightness of the sky. See, we haven't got a sun and moon like the most worlds. We just got this everlasting haze that brightens and darkens at regular cycles. What most folks calls, call midnight, we call anti-peak. What they call noon, we call peak. See, it's based on peak and anti-peak brightness. So when someone says about five hours past peak, that's what they mean. Tell me of the city's layout. Ooh, let me wet my tongue. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> he takes a pull from his tankard. The city floats above an infinitely tall spire. The spire. It lies on the side of the discarded wagon wheel, but there's no spokes that connect it to the spire. It's divided into six wards, each of them with their own function. Right now, you're in the hive. I think the purpose of the hive is to be, is to be squalor to the rest of the city's grandeur. He laughs. Factions, philosophical clubs, or gangs, if you prefer, divide up the, the running of the city between them. Were you in a faction? Ed raises his hand as if to stop you and laughs slightly. Oh, now, hold on, lad. I'm... Oops, sorry. <clears throat> oh, no. Hold on, lad. I'm no has-been faction member. They say, and they're right, that once you're one of the Harmonium, you're a Harmonium for life. We're the bloods that try and make sure Sigil stays out of trouble. We're the bloods, um, no rocking the spire, no folks getting too over-enthusiastic about hurting each other, keeping the city down to a low roar. We try to keep the peace, lad, and most times we do a decent job. Tell me of keys and portals. Sigil's called the city of doors for a reason, lad. There's portals everywhere. Portals are, well, like doors that lead across the multiverse, except they don't look like doors. Instead, they can be any bounded space. Window, door, pothole, picture frame, barrel hoop, spaces inside scaffolding, a wardrobe, each could be a portal. Waiting just, uh, waiting for just the right key to open it and take you someplace in the multiverse. Now keys. I, each portal has a key you need to open it. Now while portals can be bound can be bounded by can be bounded space, keys have more variety. They can be anything from a tune you hum when next to the portal, to dancing a jig, to being in the right mood, to having a piece of the place you want to go in your hand, and on and on. In my youth I once convinced a girl that kissing a man beside it could open port a portal to Arcadia. Turned out I was right. <laughs> Many trips to Arcadia did we have. Many portals probably have never been found. There are some you can uncover just by asking people and getting the right key. Finding out the dark of a portal is the toughest part. But I warn you, portal hopping shouldn't be a pastime for a fella in your way. Nor should you be wandering sigil after dark, neither. You you do best to stick to the main ways in open peak. Watch yourself. Alright, farewell. Guess he's not a companion. Alright. Elias. You seem a, you see a trim muscular man dressed in clothing that compared to that is comparatively comparatively drab and mundane compared to most of the outfits you've seen in the city. He carries himself with an air of supercilious arrogance. He also looks dramatically out of place here. What do you want? Uh, who are you? I'm Elias, warrior of renown. Surely you've heard of me. No? Can it truly be? Can it truly be that none in this town have heard me or my ex heard of me and my exploits? Oh, ass, I shall have to prove myself over again, all over again. And here I thought my fame spread across the world. 
What world are you from? I came across the city of Aliburn on the river Taime. Eh. Surely you have heard of its of its glories and wonders. No matter, no matter. This place is benighted and ignorant uh, when it comes to the splendors of true cities. I am told my land is what is called a prime by the denizens of the city, though a prime of what, I don't know. How did you get here? I was chasing my old foe, the villainous lifeshade Tyr Tanellel. Tanellel? I don't know. He pauses, waiting for acknowledgement, and then continues. He conjured his demonic magic and opened himself a doorway. He hurled himself through it. Before he could flee, before he could flee me entirely, I threw myself after him and found myself here. I get it. You're one of the clueless. He bristles, reddening, and his hand clutches convulsively around the hilt of his sword. Clueless, is it? I take offense to your words, sirrah, and bid you farewell in hopes that we should never cross paths again. He turns from you, still flushed with pride and rage. Look, I just wanted to ask you some questions. He sighs heavily in his, in his eyes with you, or in eyes you with disdain. Then be on with it, scarred one. Ask and be done. I'd like to apologize to you. He appears entirely shocked, as if the notion of apologies is alien to him. You wish to apologize? That's what I said. Well, then I suppose as a point of honor, I must accept your apology. Very well, and return off my apology as well. Let's set the matter aside and speak no more of it. Questions? Have you seen my journal? I'm afraid that I have not been searching for such items. I'm doing my best to reorient myself to this unfamiliar setting, and while I focus on small details in my attempts to do so, I must confess I have not been looking for journals of any sort. Alright. Oops. Well, I think that's it for the Smoldering Corpse Inn. Oh, not quite. We have Dory to go through. But we'll do that in the next episode, so... Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next episode.